So let's talk a little bit about e-readers and e-books on the tablet PC. With the release of the Kindle Reader back in 2007, there was a lot of interest in thin and light devices that could be carried around as like books that were lighter than laptops and actually could be read like a traditional book in a you know, slate, tablet kind of form. And of course now with the imminent release of the iPad we're getting some more furor and, and excitement about e-readers and e-books. Uh, traditionally uh, the, ta the PC has actually supported these things for some time, much longer than the existence of a Kindle and, and the unreleased iPad. But of course PCs aren't, well at least traditionally have not been slate devices. They, they have been actually, just never been commercially popular. They've been kind of dedicated towards you know, health industry, those types of things. So, but now as we emerge into this consumer market of the touchscreen device, we're, we're going to see more interest in actually putting an e-reader experience on the PC versus just using uh, a traditional Windows client. In fact, the, one of the e-readers I'm showing you now, this is the e-reader from ereader.com, is indeed just the Windows client uh, that I just installed on my tablet. It doesn't have any particular touch functionality. It does respond to mouse clicks, which of course tapping the screen is just a mouse click with Windows 7. So you can actually use it with touch. Um, it just doesn't have the... Um, the real f fancy experience and you can do some basic things with this client you can add annotations and notes that's available and you can change the theme you can go from multi-page to single page view that type of thing nothing very fancy but it works fine with uh, with just touch now, the thing, the reader that more people, and probably the one that most people are going to be interested in, of course, is the Kindle reader. And this reader is just in beta at the moment. It's, once again, very basic, but it does have more touch awareness to it. You can use flicks to, change, to turn pages. You can use the pinch gesture to enlarge and shrink your text and it's since it's using the Kindle technology that has the whisper sync uh, capability in it you can actually read on your tablet PC and or your desktop and then go to your Kindle reader or your iPad and where you left off the the content uh, the the readers will sync up so basically you move from one you move from device to device fairly seamlessly it's pretty nice and like I said this this client is in beta and they should be adding some nice touch uh, features to it uh, it'll be more attractive it's going to have the page animations uh, I hear just like the iPad version uh, since HP is coming out with their own slate device, they are coming up with some applications that are geared for touch, for the, for the Windows touch devices, and those clients should be available for any touch screen Windows device. Just one quick note about something that's kind of useful, and just to demonstrate something that's not germane specifically to e-readers but kind of goes to the part or the heart of the matter of why you would use a when say a tablet PC versus an iPad or some other device since this is Windows it has the full functioning capability of Windows and applications that run in Windows and there's one thing that you can kind of do um, that you can do that's very neat uh, if you were doing research, for instance, and reading a book, and you wanted to cut out a page of text, mark it up, and remember it for later purposes, which actually is something that would kind of 
kind of like an annotation, but a little bit more flexible, a little bit more powerful because you can do whatever you want to with it. it OneNote has the ability, and OneNote is part of the Office, Microsoft Office suite. And we'll talk about that in the other, uh, in the productivity section of the review. OneNote has the ability to uh, pretty much store any kind of data, handwriting, text, pictures. It, it has a screen clipping tool, which is very cool. You can basically launch it, and with it you can clip a part of the screen. But what makes it more interesting is the fact this is, while that was just a picture on the screen, because this was actually a picture of a printed page, it's well formed, OneNote actually now recognizes it as text. So, <clears throat> I now have actually something that's searchable, pure text, from OneNote's perspective. And not only that, I can actually write, write on it, so I can do handwriting annotations. So, you know, I can add words like, I'll just put something in here that I don't think is it's unique, so just to kind of demonstrate this technology. So I've got my page, it's searchable text. So if I go into Windows search, I can type, let's see here, banana. And sure enough, it found it. So something that's kind of neat not say not d directly related to e-reading, but it's a feature a function that you probably aren't going to see on other devices. Definitely not a Kindle reader since it's an e-reading device, and uh, an iPad since it's kind of a sync. It's not a true multitasking device. You wouldn't be able to launch another application while you were using your Kindle reader and take a snapshot of what was on the screen. At least not without some work probably. But with Windows, it's just part of how it works. So it just shows you some of the flexibility and some of the power. Um, you're going to have plenty of content. You know, you've got other e-readers out there for the, for the PC. They'll work. They may not be touch enabled, but as time goes on, I think you'll get upgrades. You'll see these things become more touch aware because people will want to do these things on their PCs, on their tablets, and you will see the technology. I think grow for sure but it's um it's an interesting uh, concept and um e-readers are definitely going to be uh, a big deal in the future